Hello, and welcome to Joe Youngblood's District 1 AAA East Tournaments predictions for this year. Uh, I'd like to start off by giving a special thanks to my uh, coworker Joe Faust, and helped me with the uh, recording, the setup of this. And, uh, you know, without further ado, let's get to the get to the picks here. Um, we'll start with the pigtails and go through and work our way through the uh, first round and the quarters. And then we'll go down to the uh, Russellbacks, fifth and sixth place match. And uh, we'll actually we'll go out to the finals and then go down and do the Russellbacks and finish the champion each weight class. So we start off here at the, cent the Continental and National Continental 2, Jake Toasty from CB West, and the National Harry Forns from Shamney, and taking Forns to get the win there. Going down to the next pigtail where there is one, you have the Continental in third place, wrestler Stephen Nace from Penridge, a freshman, and Daniel Baskin, a freshman from Truman. And I'm going with Nace. Uh, just, you know, just have a hunch on the Penridge guys and what Coach R.P. Norley and company are doing up there, uh, that they'll have, uh, you know, this matchup of freshmen ready to go. We'll have, they'll have Nace ready to go for that first round matchup to get into the tournament. Now looking at the quarterfinals here, we have Austin Ziegler as a beneficiary of a, four, of a bye, rather, taking on Luke Lucerne, who for some people say had a big upset win over over Maximo Mendez last week in the uh, Suburban One National Final. Uh, you know, anyone outside of Rock North uh, probably saw it as an upset, but I'm sure that the uh, Tom Avakwa and his staff and team felt that it wasn't an upset. Um, you know, in this quarterfinal matchup, we had Lucerne with the win, uh, the Forms, and Mason McClure matchup. McClure, the Delaware Valley, uh, Del Val uh, runner-up rather from Chichester. I'm going to go with uh, the sophomore uh, Forns. Uh, you know, again, going with uh, you know uh, strength of competition on that one right there. And again, just a hunch. Uh, Ryan Lewis, the CB South senior, 20 and six, and Max Mendez, uh, unfortunately, Lewis. Uh, whether it was Mendez or Lucerne was going to have a tall task, even though he had a bye in the first round. And I have Mendez with the win going and in, uh, pushing into the semis. And then the Stephen Nace, Oswaldo Carbajal, Carbajal matchup, uh, a matchup of two freshmen. Uh, you know, Carabao or, or I'm sorry, Carbajal, uh, you know, even though they're both freshmen, I feel, you know, feel that he's wrestled more matches, and uh, you know I'm gonna give him the nod there to push into the semifinals. Uh, from there, uh, we have uh, Lucerne with the win over Forns, and Mendez with the win over Carbajal, which will then go and look down to our uh, Russellbacks, as you can see. With the loss of Ziegler, McClure, Lewis, and Nace, who are in the tournament, uh, in this first matchup here of McClure and Ziegler, I have McClure with the win, uh, and then between Lewis and Nace, uh, I am taking Lewis for the uh, for the win. Again, uh, you know, his senior, 20 and six, a little bit more experience than the freshman Nace, and uh, you know, Lewis will be looking to get back to winning ways after winning the Continental last week and. You know, getting a bad draw here in the uh, in the opening round or in the quarterfinal round. From there, with our semifinal losers dropping down, we had Carbajal dropping down against McClure, which set up a rematch of their final last week in the Dell Valley League. And we have Lewis and Forns. Lou, uh, first, we'll start with Carbajal punching his ticket with a uh, qualifying regional qualifying, no worse than fourth place. And Lewis, the same thing, punching his ticket here. And to get in that third and fourth place match, uh, drops down uh, McClure down here uh, in the fifth and sixth against Forns. And I have Forns picking up the win there, take fifth. I have Lewis taking, wrestling back to take third after a disappointing loss, uh, after having a good weekend last weekend. And, you know, I got a lot, I got some flack from comments I made about 106 being Doug Zaff's weight class 
and so I mentioned Maxwell Mendez, and and when you know next time he goes out, Mendez, you know, with an opportunity to, uh, with a marquee match, and he loses. Uh, with that said, I'm taking Mendez get back to his winning ways and his march towards his opportunity to, uh, you know, wrestle for the championship. Uh, or win and uh, put himself in good position for regionals next week up at Souderton. Uh, with that said, we're going to close that 106 and move on to 113. So 113 we have. Again, same thing. We'll work our way out to the final and then hit the wrestle max and come on back. First uh, pigtail match is Caleb Lehman, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Lerman and Jeremy Gannon. Uh, you know, with this match, I'm going to go with Gannon, the senior, over the freshman. More experience, uh, and, uh, you know, I just feel that that experience is, at this point in time of, of the season, uh, is, uh, you know, you can't put a price on it. So Gannon with the win there to push himself into the quarterfinals and get into the tournament. And as we go down here, John Snyder is beneficiary of a buy. Um, due in part to Del Valle League not having a full bracket, so there are some a few gaps here, an extra buy. Uh, next pigtail we have is Ryan Murphy, a freshman from Pensbury, with a record of 0-10, wrestling Jabez Che from North Penn, a freshman record of 8-24. Uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, I got Che, or Murphy's not going to get his first win here, and Che's going to get the win, get himself in the tournament. If we go ahead and now look at our quarterfinal round, We'll scroll back up a little bit. We've got Chris Ank, who's a senior at CB East. Record 25 against Fi Tang from Academy Park. Uh, Eck is going to you know, get the win here. Gannon and Shane Thompson from uh, Rock North Jr. going against the senior. But again, I'm going to uh, you know, go with a guy who's had a little bit more experience with Shane Thompson getting the win over uh, Jeremy Gannon. And... Uh, the next quarterfinal match, we have John Snyder, a junior from Penridge, a record of 10 and 14, wrestling Kylie D'Agostino from Innerborough, who's a senior of 14 and 10. I'm going to go with Snyder here over D'Agostino. And in the last quarterfinal, we have uh, Jabez Che against Brandon Riccini, who's a sophomore who's really coming on, winning the national uh, this past weekend for Rock South. Sophomore with a lot of potential. Uh, Riccini with the win there, which puts us into our sophomore. Or, um, semifinals with Eck versus Thompson, Snyder versus Riccini, and we're going to see an Eck, uh, in my opinion, an Eck Riccini final. Uh, and now let's go back and just check our wrestle backs before we get back to who won, uh, who wins the whole thing. So we have Tang and Gannon down here again. I'm going to go with Gannon with the experience getting the win, and between Diagostino and Che. Uh, I'm going to pick uh, Kylie to get a win here at the at districts, uh, and then we have with our semifinal losers we have Thompson dropping down, and Snyder. I have Gannon uh, with the win over Snyder, punches ticket to regionals, and Thompson with the win over Digas Digas. D D Agostino, uh, Snyder and D, D Agostino down here with a rematch, with Snyder winning that rematch, and Gannon and Thompson here with Thompson winning uh, again in the rematch. And uh, you know if we go back up here to the championship, we have Eck and Riccini again. Eck a senior, Riccini a sophomore. Uh, you know just way more experience. Uh, you know you can say all you want about uh, the work that. Uh, Brad Sloan Perry and his staff do day in and day out and how they just churn out guys that, that win and win in the postseason. But, uh, you know, this one here, Machini's going to be outmatched and excellent to get the win here at the District 1 East at 113 pounds. We're going to close that out. We'll move on to 120. 120 pounds is a loaded weight class here in the East uh tournament unbelievable amount of talent here and there's five great kids uh there's a lot of great kids there's five very good kids you know four to three to four great kids and and you know someone's going home i mean there's a bunch of guys going home but someone's going to get left out that that shouldn't but with that said we're going to move on we're going to go through these uh in pigtails and work our way out uh right now we have uh uh 
Nick Misko, Pensbury Jr., record 3-5, and, and Shane Gromek, a sophomore, record 11-15. and 15. I'm going with Gromek from Chichester uh, in the Continental fourth place finisher jw scollins from cb east a sophomore 16 13 jeremy kern an interboro freshman with record of 7 17 i'm going with scollins if you just look at some of the talent in this bracket it's uh it's uh you know parker burke uh you know radner uh and andrade from satterton uh colella from william tennant there you know there's six guys right there that you know are just solid guys and uh, it's unfortunate. Going down next, uh, Andrade, get, Andrade gets a bye uh, into the quarters. And we have Justin Middleton, a Ben Salem Jr., and Anthony Colella, a William Tennant sophomore, record 26 and 4. I have Colella with the win. Uh, let's go into these uh, some of these quarterfinal matches. Pretty good. Parker will be not on cruise control, but he'll be pretty workmanlike. And I'm going to rack up some bonus points here. Uh, you know, Scollins and Burke. Burke's me too much for him. Uh, Pleasant, again, although the Del Valle League champ, uh, he get beat, gets beat here by Andrade. And uh, Kalel and Radner, albeit a good match, I'm going to take Radner for the win uh, on this one. This sets up some great semifinal matches right here. Uh, you know, Parker and Burke, uh, I'm going to go with the guy who's just wrestled more this year. Uh, and, you know, he's just been hotter as of late, and that's, that's Parker. Uh, you know, I'm going to put Burke down in that uh, in those wrestle backs and Andrade and Radner. Uh, going Radner on this one. Uh, you know, just a gut feeling. Uh, you know, Radner's you know had it's fallen some hard times, but you know comes back, wins the national last week, and uh, you know beating Aiden Burke and you know really benefiting himself by putting him opposite Parker. Uh, so he, but he, you know, again, he's going to have two tough matches here with Colella and. Andrade or Andrade just to get to the final but uh earning that trip really earning that trip to uh you know Satterton for regionals let's go back and see where we fall here for the uh uh Russell backs there Burke and Andrade are down there Gromek and Scollins Scollins with the win Pleasant and Colella Colella with the win set up a Burke and Colella match uh but you know I'm going with Burke the guy who's been there before has some state medals in the in the trophy case, and Andrade and Scalas and Andrade sets up an Andrade and Burke match. Again, going Rod and Burke on this one. Uh, here we have Scalins and Colella. Colella with the win to take fifth place. Now going back up. Uh, I don't think it'll be any surprise that uh, I'm going to go with Parker on this one over over Radner. Uh, just you know, Parker's just been on a mission this year, and uh, it's my opinion he's, he's gonna he's gonna win this bracket now. Um, Potentially the OW comes out of this bracket just because it's so tough and the guy who ends up on top uh, is the guy that, that could potentially win it, depending on how Parker does it too. Uh, you know, but if Burke is able to knock Parker off and then avenge his loss from last week against Radner, you can see Burke being a definite candidate. There's a lot of moving parts to this bracket, but uh, this is how I, I see it falling right now. As we close that out and move on to 126... 126 is another uh, bracket that has just uh, a, it doesn't have necessarily superstar talent like, but it has a lot of solid kids, and any number of kids can uh, guys in this weight class could could potentially come out and uh, you know make their way to regionals. But we'll start here with these quarterfinal or these. Uh, Pigtail matches, and we have Antonio Martaccio and Jack Turner from Glen Mills. I'm going with Martaccio, uh, Dylan, um, sorry if I'm saying this wrong, um, Huey from Penridge, a junior is 5 and 15, and Craig Baldwin, a senior from Chichester. I'm going with the guy with experience, and the guy who's been there before, and been to districts, you know, whatnot. It's, that's Baldwin. Uh, you know, set up some pretty good, um, quarterfinals right there in the top half. Uh, Raymond uh, Calder Calderio, who, you know, some say may have been upset last week at the in the uh, Continental Tournament by Brandon Bach. He draws Samika Chroma uh, after the bye. And then we have uh, Eric Wolishin, a sophomore from Rock South. Again, another guy that just, you know, Brad Silmperry, if you've watched the interview we had with him after District Duels, he said, with the, you know, 
issues they had this year at injuries and stuff. A lot of guys got experience, and here's a sophomore with a record of 10 6. The guy just goes out and battles. And, and you know, Sil Perry said it like, yeah, they, they graduate some real hammers off this year's team, but he's, you know, he's, he's kind of very forthcoming like hey they're not really going to go away they're they're still going to have uh you know some solid guys in their team next year and this is going to be one of the guys they're going to you know depending on and he's going to be wrestling Devin Weiss a senior from North Penn record of 14 and 5 uh you know I'm going to go with Woolish in here for the win to get himself into the tournament and we'll just start here and go up with you know that win get some gutter fuss and that's going to get Woolish in right down into the uh the the constellation bracket, Chroma and uh, Calderio or uh, is gonna be a good match. But I'm gonna go with Chroma here. Uh, you know, I just have a feeling I, I, I like the Academy Park team. They, you know, they they're scrappers and they come and they, they they get in your face. And you know, if they're able to dictate some of the pace of the match, they they are able to hang in matches. And you know, the longer they hang around, the more confidence they get. And Chroma one of those guys again. He's he's been there he's he's won a lot of matches in his career and i just think he's uh you know not do i just think he's gonna go out and win this match uh baldwin and and herb is another match that's intriguing here in this round uh, but i'm gonna take herb um in it and then martaccio and bach if you look down at the bottom bracket you probably already got a little teaser as to who i went with this one but i'm going with bach on this one he's just been more impressive this year uh and wrestled tougher schedule so uh, there we have uh, Bach, Herb, Chroma, and Fuss. I'm going to go Bach winning over Herb and Fuss over uh, Chroma. Let's go down and get these constellations, get through the constellations, and uh, we'll uh, see where we're at. So we have Tachio and Baldwin, which is a, you know, a, a, in a match in the first round of constellations. is you know, match you might in other years see that would be going to regionals. Uh, with this one, I'm going to go with the uh, with the upperclassmen. Again, I'm going to go with Baldwin from Chichester. I saw him wrestle in the past and just impressed, impressed with him. He scraps, he, 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 and he stays at you. Uh, then we have Woolish and, and Calderio. And again, I apologize if I'm saying that incorrectly, which I probably am. But I'm going to keep going here. I'm going to go with the uh, guy with the exper more experience, Calderio, here. Which sets up some good constellation final matchups. Uh, Chroma and Baldwin, which is a rematch from last week's Del Val final, won by Chroma. And I have Chroma winning again here and punching that ticket to regionals. And then Calderio and Herb, um, you know, uh, just uh, gonna go, gonna go uh, Jackson Herb on this one and uh, setting up Chroma and Herb there for third and fourth. Excuse me, and uh, that gives us Baldwin and Calderio here, and uh, you know Calderio with the uh, with the win for fifth place. And I, you know, I always think when you have a senior ends up in that in that match, I, I really always hope they win it. I mean, wrestle it uh, because you know you look at instances last year where some guys didn't wrestle in that fifth and sixth place match at districts, and injuries happened, and you know they. They forfeited that last match because they potentially the last match of their career, and they didn't feel like they should wrestle fifth and sixth place match. And it meant the difference between getting to regionals, and not getting to regionals, uh, for some guys. And you know, in some years, it means getting to states, and not getting to states. So, I'm a big advocate of always wrestling, even you know your last match, you have an opportunity to go out. You, you know, at least if anything, go out and compete. Uh, with that said, with Chroma and Herb here, uh, you know. We got Herb taking third, and we can go back up to the top here between Bach and Fuss. I think it's gonna be Fuss, and I think it's gonna be Fuss big, potentially uh, bonus points. And you know, th th with this match, if it goes away, uh, I, I feel it does. I think Fuss goes and throws his name in the hat for the OW of this uh, uh, this uh, whole tournament here. So let's move on to one thirty-two, and. This match, or this weight class is, you know, Zach Trampe and uh, on one level and a lot of guys at a high level just below him. Um, you know, seeing Trampe wrestle at district duels in the finals and, and, you know, just handling Jacob Campbell the way he did. And, uh, you know, just uh, he's, he's focused, he's on our level, he's... You know, I think he's looking to uh, make up for, 
you know, the rumor is he was hurt down the stretch last year at States and what led to him being uh, finished in sixth. Uh, but uh, I think he's, he's just on a mission this year, you know. Already committed to going to Binghamton. It's off his mind. He's just going out and wrestling, letting it loose. And, you know, it shows. So with that said, in this first round matchup between Do Dominic Stoughton, uh, or Stoughton, uh, from CB South. He's a freshman, record 9-9 against the Del Val. Third place, Rashawn Hicks from Academy Park. Junior record of 12-23. and 23. I'm going to go Stoughton, or Stoughton, um, for the win. Uh, next match, the Shamney freshman, Luke Landman, and then there, the various Sykes, Glenn Mills, sophomores, 13 and 14. I'm going to go with the sophomore, Sykes from Glenn Mills, uh, which sets up a Trent Pace out in, in Connor Trowbridge and Sykes quarterfinal. Go down here, Cam Robinson from Rock North, freshman, uh, having a great season. We'll get the uh, bye to, to the uh, quarters against Josiah Nichols. From Chichester, sophomore, 18-7. And, and in our last first-round matchup is Jake Yoder, North Penn seniors, 12-6. And, and Doug Mole, uh, uh, junior from Pensbury, who's 15-20. I'm going to go Yoder on this one, which sets up our four quarterfinals. I got A.J. Tam Marino from William Tennant, a freshman, 24-1. You know, you know, definite future star in District 1 and beyond. I uh, got him with the win over Yoder. And uh, I got Robinson with the win over Nichols. Uh, you know, that's one of those ones. And I, I know Benny, the Jet Rodriguez, likes to get on me about it. But, you know, Robinson's, uh, you know, just coming from a, a better room, uh, uh, you know, right now. Uh, you know, Nichols does have Baldwin to wrestle with. But, uh, you know, I just think that the uh, Rock North... Uh, 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 I think the Rock North guy Robinson's gonna gonna get the win. Sykes and Trowbridge. I'm going with Trowbridge here from Satterton, uh, and uh, Trampe and Stauffen. I think you know where I'm going with this one. I'm going go with Trampe. If we go out to semifinals, we'll stay up top here. Uh, it's gonna be Trampe again, uh, and again. Uh, I'm gonna say these matches into the finals are gonna be bonus points, and uh, you know Robinson Tam Tamarino. Got uh, Tam Marino at the win to get to the finals against Trampe. And, uh, you know, we'll come back to that after talking about the wrestlebacks down here. We have, uh, we can take those away to reveal those drop downs. We have uh, Stoughton and Sykes. I'm going with Sykes with the win. Um, you know, just got a hunch. Uh, this kid from Glen Mills is gonna gonna open some eyes. Um, and uh, you know, win some matches here and be a match, you know, potentially a match away from going to regionals. And we have Nichols and Yoder, and I'm gonna go Nichols on this one again. Uh, just got a hunch uh, uh, about these uh, some of these kids from uh, the Del Valle League. You know, a lot of people like to talk trash on it, say that it's not quality wrestling, and there's only five teams, and this, that, and the other thing. The fact of the matter is, a lot of tough kids down there uh, that don't get their due, and here's a chance for them to shine. And, you know, they, a lot of them will come with a chip on their shoulder and look to, uh, you know, to, to make a name for themselves. And, you know, Nichols is just a sophomore, and I got him with the win over Yoder, which puts him also a win away from regionals. But uh, unfortunately, they're uh, both Nichols and Sykes will be, you know, uh, dropping down to the fifth and sixth place match and a rematch uh, from last week in the uh, Del Valle League. And, uh, I got Nichols with the win there, and I got Robinson with the win uh, to give uh, him the third place and Trowbridge the, the fourth. And uh, this Trampe Tamburino match, I'm looking forward to. Uh, I won't be able to see it, but um, if I want to. Give a if I'm going to give a prediction on it, uh, I think Trampe is going to win hands down. I think Tamarino might try and keep it, be able to keep it close early. But ultimately, I said Trampe winning, um, you know, by like uh, you know between six and eight points. Um, I just think he's going to be too much uh, for Tamarino to handle. Moving on to 138 pounds. This is Trampe was the start of that murderer's row for 
rock south. So we'll uh, we'll explore these uh, these weight classes here. Eric Laughlin and Clifton Ford will be the first of the pigtail matches here. I got Eric Laughlin winning that match. Um, you know, sophomore over the senior. Uh, you just again like what uh like what uh you know Laughlin brothers are about from North Penn, and uh, you know moving on to Ryan Tiernan and Joseph Goldie, Goldie, sorry, from Harry S. Truman. Uh, I'm going Tiernan, the senior, a little bit more experience. Uh, doesn't really come down to record, just come down to the guys been around longer. Uh, you know, and uh, you'll be ready to go. Know what the grind of the postseason's about. Uh, Jake Shalinski, he was runner-up in the Suburb One National. He gets a bye. I don't. And uh, we'll come back and talk about his matchup. One of the more intriguing matchups is a quarterfinal here in this tournament. And then we have uh, Randy Knapp, William Tennant Jr., record 12 and 12, and Austin Saba, the Shamley Jr., record 15 and 10. I'm going with Saba for the win. Uh, to put himself in position uh, or get himself into the tournament uh, for his victory. He'll get Muhammad Kaba, a senior from Academy Park. Like I said, I like these Academy Park kids. Uh, John Basile, the coach there, uh, you know, one of the good guys of the sport, does a lot for his kids uh, past just coaching and uh, really prepares them for not just coaching or not just wrestling, but prepares them for life. And uh, like I've always liked and admired and respected what his program is about. Uh, you know, Cabo with the win over Saba. Uh, I got Whiting beating Shalinsky in a matchup of. Uh, you know, two underclassmen, uh, just, uh, you know, again, you know, like, uh, this Penridge team has wrestled a pretty, pretty meat grinder like schedule. Uh, they're battle tested and ready for this, this type of, uh, situation with the, the pressure of the postseason. Jacob Shalinsky, tough kid, uh, but I just think Whiting's gonna be a little bit too much for him in this, uh, quarterfinal matchup. Uh, we got the Delaware Valley runner up, Jeffrey Kinter from Interborough, and, uh, Ryan Tiernan, uh, you know, I think Tiernan's going to get the win to push him into the semifinals, a match away from qualify for regionals, and Kerry Palmer is going to win over Eric Laughlin. Uh, Palmer with the win over Tiernan, and Kaba with the win over Whiting. Uh, again, just got a hunch. Uh, you know, seeing him in the past, just, you know, like the, like the way, how hard the, the, the kid wrestles. Uh, from Academy Park, you know, here are semifinalists, loser, losers that drop down. Uh, Laughlin and Kinter, Laughlin with the win. Uh, Shalinsky and Saba, Shalinsky gets the win and gets Tiernan. Uh, you know, Tiernan was um, uh, in the semis, uh, but, you know, he runs into a tough, tough uh, Jacob Shalinsky. Shalinsky gets the win. And gets his, uh, you know, qualifies for regionals, and uh, Whiting gets the win, which sets up a rematch of uh, that quarterfinals. And uh, you know, here we have Laughlin and Tiernan, and I got Laughlin with the win, gains the valuable experience as a sophomore, and something he can really build upon for next year. Uh, with the Shalinsky and Whiting matchup, two guys as evenly matched as this, it's hard to beat this guy two times in one day. Uh, let alone two times in one season. Uh, so I'm going to say Shalinsky gets uh, vengeance here, puts himself in better position for the uh, for uh, regionals with the third place finish. And Kerry Palmer takes care of business here and beats uh, Muhammad Kaba to uh, to claim the title 138 pounds. And we're going to move on to 145 after this. And again, your one seed, uh, Riley Palmer. Um, and uh, we'll go through the uh, the matchups here. Uh, we have uh, Peter DeMalley from CB South, a senior record 15 and 14, against Ryan Jackson, a Penwood senior 27 and 4. I'm going to take Jackson for the win here. You know, Penwood, the guys that they push to the postseason are always, you know, tough kids. They, you know, a couple guys they had, you know, a guy or two here in recent years qualify for states just. Like I said, the 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 league, the, the the top end of the Del Valle League is comprised of guys who come out, they get in your face, they stay in your face, and they wrestle hard the the you know the entire time. 
Uh, next we have Gus Natale and uh, uh, Margell Hoodnell from Chichester. Uh, on this match here, I'm going to take the uh, again Hoodnell over Natale. Uh, and the first of two, or I'm sorry, first of three um, pigtails. Uh, Dylan She from Rock North gets a bye into the um, quarters against Tyler Simpson from Glen Mills. Then we have Logan Green, a Penridge freshman record of 6-5. and five. And Marcellus Martin, a junior, 14-8 from Abington. I think the junior, Martin, for the win, sets up a rec uh, match with Will Laughlin, Eric's older brother. Uh, and I got Laughlin for the win. Uh, here we have Dylan Sheehy and Tyler Simpson, a sophomore from Glen Mills. I would take Sheehy uh, for the win. Uh, but don't don't sleep on Simpson yet. He's not done for uh, this day if he loses there in the quarters. Uh, I got Cole Ragusa, sophomore record of 13-15 from Satterton with the win over Hudnell. And then Palmer beating Jackson. Uh, from here in the semis, I got Palmer beating Ragusa and Laughlin beating Sheehy. As we drop down here, we can take away the semifinal losers. Uh, and we have Jackson versus Hudnell. Again, I got Jackson for the win. And Simpson and Martin. Again, Martin, uh, the junior from Abington. Simpson, the sophomore from Glen Mills. I'm going to take the sophomore for the win to you know push himself into the consolation semifinals where he gets a uh, Cole Ragusa sophomore uh, that is uh, with a losing record and Simpson with the win that gets himself to regionals and uh, Jackson with the win over um, she to have an all Delaware Valley um, third and fourth place match, sorry, excuse me, which puts Ragusa and Sheehy down here. Uh, Sheehy with the win, or Sheehy, sorry, I'm not, if I mispronounce it. And again, Simpson, if losing his first match, wrestling all the way back to take third. Uh, up here we have Will Lough Laughlin and Car or Riley Palmer, I'm sorry. Uh, Riley Palmer, if he is 100% healthy, is, uh, you know, is is uh, as tough as they come and uh, you know he will take advantage of this uh, situation here being in the finals and already have that ticket punch to regionals and uh, take the win here at 145 pounds over Will Laughlin. Like I said we'll move on to 152 pounds. Here we are at 152 pounds we have uh, you know, Colin Shannon uh, was the champ out of the Continental, Suburban One con Continental. Uh, Dylan Cordingly was the champ out of Del Val. Um, champ out of the Suburban One National was Nick Nacero from Rock North. Uh, we'll go through these, uh, you know, pigtail matches here. We have Sean Peel and Kerry Cottrell. Uh, I'm going to go with the upperclassman here, Sean Peel from Pensbury, beating Cottrell. Then we have Shamil Aladinov, a sophomore from William Tennant, and Shamar Hannibal, who is a senior from Academy Park, who's 21-6. Shamar Hannibal would be on my District 1 all-name team this year, if there was one. I'm going to go with Hannibal for the win. I mentioned Hannibal is uh, you know, quite the, he's quite the namesake, Hannibal, the cannibal lector. Uh, that sets up our quarterfinals up top. David Nahas from Penridge, get, who is a runner-up in the Continental Tournament, uh, gets to buy and will set up a match with Dylan Cordingly of uh, Chichester. And uh, we have LJ Kahn from Council Rock South, sophomore record of 14 and 9. And Craig Finkenbeiner, a Satterton senior, 22 and 16, and this match I'm going to go con, uh, and that sets up our quarterfinals. And we have Nick Nassero against Con, a Rock North, Rock South matchup, and I have Nassero for the win uh, here in this Nahas and quarterly matchup. 
I am going to take the senior Nahas, the experience. Uh, I'll probably get hammered for my favoritism of Penridge guys. And, uh, but the fact of the matter is they, uh, you know, um, the, they, they, they train the peak at this time. Um, and, uh, I just, you know, guy has 21 wins with the record or the schedule that, that, that Penridge wrestles has won some matches. So I got Nahas with the win over accordingly. We have Dan Esenov, a junior from Ben Salem with record 21 and 11 oh, against, uh, Hannibal, Shamar Hannibal, uh, Esenov with the win to put himself in the semis and Colin Shannon with the win over Sean Peel. I have Shannon beating Esenov and Nahas with the win over Nacero. We have Peel and Hannibal, and again, Shamar Hannibal with the win, coming out and you know doing his best to to uh, work towards qualifying for regionals like some of his teammates. Uh, then we have Cordingly and Khan. I have Khan with the win over Cordingly. Um, and again, I, I probably get a little flack for picking the uh, the Rock South guys, but uh, the proof is in you know past practice, and and that's why you know this situation, some of these matches that are a little bit closer, toss ups. Um, it's what what I'm what I'm going with. Uh, so. Uh, we have Esenov and Khan. I'm, I'm going to go Khan again, which then puts Esenov th er, down here. Well, I moved the wrong one. Sorry about that. I have Nacero beating Hannibal. Uh, so we have an Esenov Hannibal matchup um, with Hannibal winning and taking fifth, and Nacero with the win over Khan and a re. Uh, rematch of that quarterfinal ma uh, round match, and uh, there are your four qualifiers. Uh, for oh, I'm sorry, I forgot the final. We have Shannon and Nahas, and Shannon with the win over Nahas. Uh, you know, another guy from returning state qualifier, two-time state qualifier from North Penn. Uh, again, another one of those guys that's just on a mission this year. He's really, you know, goal is to, to place high in that podium like all these guys are, but, you know, more so, uh, you know, after being there twice and coming away empty-handed, really, really looking to get, uh, get there. Uh, so that closes out 152. We're going to move on to 160 pounds. 160 pounds features Josh Stillings from Penridge. Uh, again, uh, you know, can't say enough good things about him, you know, as, not just as a wrestler, but as a person, very humble kid, uh, you know, just goes out and, and just, uh, you know, outworks his opponents. Not a lot of flash to what he does, just goes out and, you know, works hard, keeps his head down and, and, uh, you know, gets the, gets the job done. Uh, and, uh, you know, his weight class hasn't, um, isn't, uh, isn't loaded like some of our others here in the East weight class, but we'll go through. We have Rory Renzi and Marcus Brogsdale in the first round, uh, pigtail and uh, I'm going to go with the sophomore Rienzi from uh, the Chamonix. We have Kyle Clements from William Tennant, a junior 12 and 12 and Noah Harvey, a junior with a record of 23 and 7. I'm going to take Noah Harvey for the win uh, to get into the quarterfinals and get himself in the tournament. Uh, Paul O'Neill from North Penn, sophomore, gets a bye and uh, then we have Cole Flanagan, a Rock South freshman 20 and 15 against a sophomore 19 and 14, Bruno Stolfi. Take Flanagan for the win uh, over Stolfi. And uh, we'll stay down here. We'll go over our uh, quarterfinal matches. Of, I mean, you can kind of see who where I'm going with it. But Flanagan and Shane Rose, the seniors going to be too much for him. And uh, it's gonna just going to overpower him. Uh, so Rose over Flanagan. Uh, got O'Neill over Tate there in the other quarterfinal. Uh, then I have Gowton from Pensbury, a senior over Harvey, and Stillings over Rienzi. Uh, Stillings will be one of those guys that will be a candidate for the OW here in this weight class, just for the simple fact that uh, I think he's going to win. He's going to win the tournament, and he's going to win probably every match by bonus points. So uh, I got Stillings over Gowton, 
and then I have Rose over O'Neill. Uh, so let's go down here. We can get these out of the way. Renzi and Harvey. I got Harvey for the win. Getting that Concy semifinal. And Tate and Flanagan. I'm going to take Rod Tate, the senior from Len Mills. Just to be a little bit too much uh, for uh, the young freshman from Council Rock South. And Tate and Gowton. I'm going to go with Gowton from Pensbury for the win over Tate in a close match. And O'Neill dropping down after a tough loss uh, to uh, um, beat uh, Noah Harvey from Chichester. And here we have Harvey and Tate. I'm going to take Tate for the win. Uh, again, a rematch of last week's Delval final. And then I have O'Neill for the win over Gowan and take third. And up here, no surprise, uh, Josh Stillings for the win here at 160 pounds. So, you know, there you go. Uh, there are your um, placers at 160 pounds. Let's move on to 170 here as we keep cranking them out. Uh, we have... Um, that weight class it just has a lot of just quality guys in it. Uh, no guys that are going to blow your doors off and knock your socks off, but they're going to. Uh, there's a lot of guys that can come out here. There's, you know, there's probably this weight class seven seven guys deep that it could be that could come out. This was a tough one to pick. Um, so, uh, without anything more talk about it, we have Max Schumer, Pensbury Junior, thirteen and nineteen, and David Blanchard of Penridge Junior of sixteen and eleven. I'm gonna go Blanchard here. I've got Robert Cooper, Rock South Senior, who's fifteen and seventeen, and Valentin Bogachev, a Central Bucks South Senior, who is twenty one and nine. I'm gonna go Cooper on this one. Um you know like I said, uh, I, 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 it, it's just, just, just a hunch. Uh, the, those guys, uh, there's something in the water up there. Uh, when it comes time to for postseason, I, I can't explain it. Um, here we go. Joe Forte gets the buy here. He's the runner up in the Del Val, so he comes out into, into that uh, quarterfinal already. And we have David Essenoff. A junior from Men's Hill, 17 and 6, and Giovanni Perez, a Chichester junior with a record of 21 and 11. I'm going to take Esnoff for the win over Perez. Uh, unfortunately, uh, for his efforts in that win, he will uh, get into the loser's bracket because David McCoy, uh, the seniors, you know, from William Tennant's just tough as nails and beating a lot of good guys this year. Uh, then we have Forte and Leinbach. I'm taking Leinbach, the junior from the Chamonix. And then we have Cooper and Fop, who's a senior from uh, Satterton. And I got Fop beating Cooper and Fitzgerald beating Blanchard. Uh, I got Fitzgerald beating Fop and McCoy beating Leinbach. Uh, setting up a, a pretty good final there, 170 pounds. We'll come back to that. So here we can take off our drop down crossovers. Uh, Blanchard and Cooper. I got Blanchard for the win over Cooper. Uh, line, or I'll go. Uh, Forte and Esnoff. I got Esnoff for the win. Uh, here we have Leinbach and Blanchard. I'm going to go Leinbach over Blanchard. And then Esnoff, I'm sorry, Fop over Esnoff. And then this match here, I have Esnoff being Blanchard. Fop and Leinbach, again, another interesting matchup. Like Blanchard, Esnoff, Fop, Forte, Cooper. Like these were, you know, um, you know, guys that, you know, in the, in the mix, uh, to, to go out. Um, even Perez is a tough guy there. Like, there's just a lot of tough guys here, but I have Fop for the third place. And one of the more, more like I said, more intriguing matchups here in this East tournament. Again, not two guys that are, that are, uh, stars by any sense of imagination, but two guys that are going to provide probably a good match. Uh, but I'm going to take Fitzgerald, the, uh, senior from Academy Park, to, to get the win here and be your 170 pound champ at the, uh, District 1 East Tournament. Let's move on to 182 pounds. And again, another weight class. Uh, you know, you have one undefeated wrestler and a lot of their guys just that are going to be scrapping to get in that top four. And uh, let's take a look, see how it pans out. So here we have Zach Manning and Daryl Walker. Manning, the junior for Abington, 5 and 16, and 
Walker the Junior from Academy Park at 20 and 11. Got Walker for the win. Uh, here we have Alex Litz from Harris Truman, 21 and 12 during his junior campaign. And Garrett Qualet, or Quale from North Penn, a junior who's got a record of 12 and 6. Uh, this one, I'm going to go Litz for the win. Again, Truman, uh, you know, always has uh, kids that go out and uh, just kids that go out and tough kids, uh, for that matter, just bluntly put. Uh, Yusuf Aladinov from William Tennant Jr. is 18 and 8, gets the bye into the quarterfinals. And then we have uh, Zach Magdalinskis uh, from the Chamonix, freshman who's 15 and 14, and Michael uh, Beljan from uh, Junior from Penridge, 7 and 16. I'm going to take Magdalinskis for the win, which sets up a match with Dante Pangawish, who was a who's a senior from Glen Mills with a record of 18 and 5, the Delaware Valley champ or Del Val champ, and Pangawish with the win. And here we have Nick Korbich, a sophomore record of 13 and 12, and Yusuf Aladinov. And here we have Aladinov with the win. Yes, that's right. I did pick against a Rock South guy. We have Anthony Zizza, a junior from Interboro, record of 17 and 15, uh, runner up in Del Val against Alex Litz. I got Litz pushing himself into the semifinals against Colin Stevens from CB East. The senior is 30 and 0. Stevens with the win over Litz and Aladinov coming out of that continental runner up, uh, getting back to the finals in a rematch against Stevens after beating Pangawish. Let's go down and look at our wrestle back bracket. Panguish drops down to there. Litz drops to there. Walker and Zizza. I have Zizza for the win. Uh, represent Interboro. And then Korbich and Magdalinskis. Again, sorry if I say it incorrect. I got Korbich winning. Uh, and then Korbich coming back and beating Litz. And Panguish beating Zizza. Which sets up the Zizza Litz match. Litz with the win. Pangwish and Corbitz. Pangwish with the win. I think he's just going to be too much for the sophomore in that match. Um, you know, for his sometimes as much ice waters in the veins as these Rock South guys. Some of them, some point in time, and get overwhelmed. And this would be one of those situations where one of their guys gets overwhelmed with the moment. And uh, our final, Stevens and Alan Dinoff is going to go kind of the same way it did last week with Stevens with the win. And that, uh, you know, that's a 182-pound bracket right there. Take a look at. So let's move on to 195. And Nathan Darden gets the buy into the tournament where he'll see Paul O'Neill in the quarters, and we'll come back to that one. That'll be our last quarter for now. We'll go over. We have Ryan Hyber from CB South, a sophomore record, 12, 14 and 12. And the Del Val runner up, Anthony Salucci from Chichester, senior 21 and 9. We got Salucci with the win. Uh, again, due to gaps, Jack Morgan gets the buy into the uh, quarterfinals. And in the other first round matchup, Tyke Jackson from Council Rock North, a sophomore record four and ten, and Brandon Ullman, a senior record thirteen and eleven. Uh, I got Ullman for the win there uh, to get a, a quarterfinal matchup against Davis Lee, a f freshman from Pensbury. Lee with the win, and then we have Dan Dumas and Jack Morgan. I'm going to take Dumas from Penwood. Uh, at uh, 195 here to get into the, the semifinals. We have Tyler Getman, a senior from Rock South, and Anthony Salucci. Uh, I'm going to take Tyler Getman for the win. Uh, and Paul O'Neill and Dar Nathan Darden. I'm going to take Paul O'Neill for the win. I'm going to take O'Neill over Getman. And Dumas over Lee to get to the final. Uh, another finalist for the Del Val. If we drop down here, look at a wrestleback or a consolation bracket. Uh, Darden and Salucci. I got Salucci beating Darden to get to the uh, Consi semifinals. And 
we have Morgan and Ullman. Uh, Morgan, the senior from Souderton, and Ullman, the senior from uh, North Penn. I got Morgan for the win uh, to submatch with Getman and Morgan and Lee and Salucci. And I got Salucci for the win there to get uh, into uh, the punch ticket for regionals, essentially. With this Morgan and Getman matchup, I'm going to take Morgan uh, to uh, to beat Tyler Getman. Uh, you know, just in my opinion, uh, just Getman's a little too inconsistent for my liking. And uh, not just of who he beats and who he doesn't beat, but just inconsistent in matches. And uh, that's not a slight of him, you know. Uh, just, he just, uh, he, not always there, uh, f you know, when he, when he should be. And it sends up Lee and Getman, and Getman beating Lee, uh, Salucci and Morgan. I got Morgan beating Salucci, and we go back up here to the championship final, and I got O'Neal beating Dumas to claim the, the title 195 pounds. So from there, we're moving to 220. We'll close out these last two here and uh, try to have it done in under an hour. Uh, so, again, here is a, a weight class where you have Joe Doyle's lone loss to Brian Kennerly, come back, uh, you know, turning state medalist for Rock South. Um, like I said, the lone blemish was to Brian Kennerly, who's undefeated. And we'll get to him in the uh, West tournament in the preview. Uh, but before we get ahead of ourselves, let's get to uh, these pigtail matches. We have James Loveless, a Central Bucks East senior record, 12 and 17 against the Interboro Junior, who Charles Harris, who's 10 and 18, got Loveless for the win there. Uh, senior beating the junior. Then we have Matt Saska, the Shamney sophomore record, 5 and 22, and Jaquiel Williams, a Glenn Mills Jr., who's two and two, uh, you know, uh, I don't know the story behind Williams, but he he's two and two, and he was a runner up in the Del Valle League. Again, some people might scoff at that, but that's intriguing to me for some odd reason, and I don't know what it is about it. Like only four matches on the year, not a lot known about him. I'm I'm, I'm taking Williams in this one. Uh, I don't know what it is. Uh, again, if I had a, a District One All Name team, uh, you know, one of these days I gotta sit down and do that. Isaiah. Godbold would be on it as well as uh, Shamar Hannibal um, and uh, in Ishmael Tarawali or Tarawali from uh, uh, Upper Darby would be on it too for this year just through off the top of my head and uh, you know he gets to buy at, into the quarterfinals and when down in the last pigtail we have Ben uh, Bernhauser a CB South sophomore record 4 and 6 and Scott uh, Diet Thorne uh, or Die Thorn. I'm not exactly sure how you pronounce that. Pensbury Senior, 7 and 11. I think Die Thorn or Die Thorn or Die Horn uh, in that match. It's a uh, quarterfinal match with Owen Verispy or Verispy. Uh, I'm taking North Penn Jr., uh, who's looked impressive this year. And here we have a good matchup between this Academy Park Jr., Sile Martin, and the Truman Senior. I'm going to take the Academy Park Jr., Sile Martin. Um, to, to win this one. So, uh, you know, again, just going on a hunch. Uh, looked at some matchups, looked at, you know, who they wrestled. Just a hunch. Um, but, you know, that is, uh, that's how, uh, that's how I'm leaving it for now. I, you know, you haven't heard the last of Godbold yet, though. Uh, then we got, uh, Jaquiel Williams and Steven Dadio, the Penridge Juniors, 14 and 10. I got Dadio with the win and Joe Doyle with the win over Loveless. Doyle to win over Dadio and Verspi with the win over Martin, setting up like in a pretty intriguing matchup there in the final. Um, and we'll talk more about that in a little bit. So we got Martin that drops down here and Dadio drops down here between Loveless and Williams. I got Loveless with the win. Um, again, I'm intrigued by Williams, but not enough to take him any further than I already have. Uh, you know, I, I had him getting into the tournament, but then, you know, then losing two straight, I think that's probably pretty accurate. But again, like I said, uh, not a whole lot to know about him just yet. Diethorn and Godbolt. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, I got Godbolt with the win over Diethorn, and then it sets up our Concy finest Concy semis here. Uh, I got Martin with the win over Loveless. And then uh, Godbolt, the win over Dadio, set up a rematch. 
and we got Loveless and Dadia coming down here. Dadia winning, and then with this God Bowl and Martin matchup, which was an intriguing one. Again, I talk about beating the same guy twice in one day, and I just don't think uh, I don't think Martin can do it. I think uh, you know I'd say that God Bold comes back and wrestles back for third, which you know. Uh, it, it puts him in a good spot for next week for regions coming out in third place. And then if we move back up here to this final match here, again, can't go, can't pick against Joe Doyle anytime, even thinking about pick, picking against him anytime before you see him step on the mat with uh, the likes of uh, Brian Kennerly. You have to you have to take Joe Doyle in all these big matches, or all these matches leading up to that one. So that's 220 pounds here. Uh, let's move on to 285. We'll close out this video here uh, and uh, you know get to the other ones. So we have 285 pounds here. Uh, you know, again, some uh, we, some 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 of our better heavyweights are, are going to come out of this, uh, this tournament here. You know, um, four ref top that are uh, that are. Uh, you know, kind of head and shoulders above everyone else are Osterhout, Petro, Cooper, and uh, Cody. And uh, we'll see how they fare here. Shane Anderson with the the buy into the uh, the second round, or quarterfinal rather, uh, as a result of uh, a gap in uh, from the Del Val. Um, and... Uh, Next one is Austin Bishop, a sophomore from Penridge with a record of six and ten, and the Del Val runner-up Jordan Hockenberry from Glen Mills. It's a record of sixteen and eight. Got Hockenberry for the win. Trent Petro from CB East gets a buy into the quarters, and then we have Alec Laferman from Rock North, a junior with a record of fifteen and thirteen, and Ethan Wardrobe, a senior from Satterton, record of three and ten. I'm taking Laferman. From there, Laferman will, uh, you know see himself right into the wrestle backs because Osterhout pretty pretty darn tough there for the uh for uh, the Chamonix. And we have Petro and Josh Johnson, the sophomore from Chichester, the champion at Del Val, twelve and eleven. I got Trent Petro for the win. Uh Hockenberry and Cooper match. Um I just don't think Hockenberry has what it takes Cooper, you know, ranked towards the top of uh, the district one rankings in around the top for most of the year and will not disappoint will make the semifinals ryan cody the senior from north penn has really come on as a late really for the most part has flown under the radar this year uh you know kind of um rankers and people really focus on some other heavyweights in the region uh but here he is in semifinals winning the continental super one continental last week uh between Cooper and Cody, Cody with the win, and then Petro and Osterhout. Osterhout the win, setting up an Osterhout Cody match. But first, let's talk about our our uh, wrestlebacks. Anderson Hockenberry, Hockenberry with the win. Get Anderson, uh, you know, sophomore, just young kid, uh, in, a, in a weight class where he's wrestling against some guys that are, you know, men, uh, for lack of a better term. And uh, Hockenberry, um, you know, just gonna use his uh, age to his advantage. Then we have Josh Johnson and Laferman. I'm going to take Laferman in this match over Johnson. And we have Cooper and uh, Laferman. And uh, I got Cooper for the win, punching a ticket to regionals. And Petro and Hockenberry. I got Petro with the win. Set up a Petro Cooper matchup. I got Cooper winning there. I forgot to get the fifth place match. Hockenberry and Laferman. Yeah, Laferman beat Hockenberry for fifth. Like I said, Cooper winning third. And again, here we are with the, the four four toughest kids getting out. Uh, Cody and Osterhout. Uh, you can flip a coin with a lot of these. This is just another one. So, uh, you know, you flip a coin. But I'm going to go Cody on this one uh, for, the, uh, for the win. And, uh, you know, win the championship there uh and, you know that concludes our uh our brackets here for the east tournament uh, a few n notes uh as far as where uh, making predictions for the ow if anyone but parker wins that 120 pound weight class they'll be the ow um i can see ow coming out of this weight class because of how tough it is uh, but see a lot of times uh you 
a lot of times coaches, and I, I was guilty of it as well when I coached, um, you, you hand in your OW ballot before the heavyweights wrestle. And with a weight class like this that has four, four solid guys, don't, don't sell yourself short, especially if you have one of the guys that, you know, like a Petro or Cooper gets in there, or even anyone else for that matter, not named in those, in that, in that semifinal that I have here. Um, you know, Josh still needs to be a candidate for OW if he, if he blows, if he buzz saws through his weight class. Um, you know, same with Riley Palmer or Colin Shannon, like, it all depends on, you know, coaches, uh, you know, coaches vote different ways. Like, I can vote for the guy who maybe had an easy weight class and went out and handled his business. I can vote for the guy that kind of grinded out in a tougher weight class. Um, not saying Matt Parker couldn't be the OW in his weight class, but, you know, uh, he's the, you know, hands down favorite, uh, to win that weight class. And again, coaches might lean that way just because he, won that weight class and it was tough as it was if i'm gonna if i'm gonna pick the top four teams finished for this tournament i have rock south winning it penridge in second i'm gonna go north penn third and rock north fourth that's my prediction for this tournament how it's gonna go and uh you know that's about all i got for the east tournament uh again uh i hope you guys enjoy this uh, it's uh, you know, it's fun to do, and uh, I do enjoy it, uh, and I do enjoy the feedback that I receive, good, bad, or indifferent. Uh, you know, if it, if it's bad, it's something that you know I, I do take uh, into consideration because what it does, it, it forces me to look at what I'm doing and how I'm doing it, and uh, provide a better product for uh, you guys, the uh, the the guys that are watching it, and uh, so. With that said, again, thank you for uh, for even tuning in. And I do appreciate it. And, uh, you know, I'll have my other broadcasts coming up and uh, the other predictions. Thanks.